All right, man. So to get started, um, the biggest part of just getting started is just you introducing yourself and then kind of giving yourself a little shout out, whatever it is that you want to shout out, what it is that you do, whatever the case may be. Hmm, what do I want to shout out? Honestly, my name is Brandon. Brandon Wright for the people who know me, who don't know me, you might know me as uh, Trey Sean. That's what, uh, that's my Guano name. But my alias, <laughs> he's a more, uh, as a Gemini, I bet you get to you can say there's like two sides to you. So if that is true, I'm not going to say it is or isn't. Brandon Ray is the quiet, shy guy who's one of those words. Trey Sean is the the nightlife me and it likes to have fun and stuff like that. He's a lot less shy. If I were to promote anything about myself, honestly, I do want to get back into making my music. I've had random people hit me up lately saying they want me to start making music again, which I would like to get back into. It's just, music's not cheap if you want to bring money, and I'm not uh, smart enough to do it on my own. I need help. But yeah, I got a lot of stuff. I would, I'm definitely, I don't know, I'm not Drake with the, uh, with the blackberry full of lyrics, but I do have, I do have uh, some stuff cooking, waiting, just ready to make some music when I get some free time again. That'd be nice. I would say a benefit uh, to having your hands in multiple hats is just being able to, we just talking about this, letting go of the perfectionism mindset. Sometimes you just gotta put some shit out there. Just do it. And, and then see what happens after that because Otherwise, you'd just be waiting forever. Otherwise, yeah. you'd be sitting there. You got books full of lyrics that uh, you haven't used. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, yeah, I do have, I mean, on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, all this stuff. I do have one song out, obviously. Um, I'll, I'll give somebody the links to it somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, the, the links will be in the we'll episode, pop it in there. episode description yeah, uh, of whatever it is, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back into it. I really do enjoy it. I feel like if I have one, I think I have like three passions in my life, and one of them being music, the other being like children in the aspect of just watching kids grow up and showing them the right way. Because anyone from Kansas City, especially from like where we grew up specifically, we didn't grow up the best, but we like we worked with what we had. Mm -hmm. We got we got through with it. And I want other kids to who are growing up in the same situation to be like, hey, I'm not 30. I'm not 40. But I'm still old enough to have been through probably what you're going through, if not more. And I can tell you what I did to keep keep myself going. I just like to see kids like make it out the same way. I'm not. I didn't. I'm like by any means. I'm not made it out of anything. But <laughs> I'm alive. That's 25. Out, man. 25 is a a black man in Kansas City. You know, that's you know, there's not a lot of us that saw 25. So I am grateful for that. And I think my third fa uh, passion would probably be just uh, fashion. I really do like clothing and just setting up outfits, curating outfits. That's what I do right now. I'm a visual merchandiser specialist at Nike, which is a big word for high dress mannequins and I put clothes <laughs> on the floor. Don't downplay it. That's, I mean, that's what it is. Like, but I, That's what I really, really love. That's what I really like. I like music. I like the enrichment of children and people in, in general, just helping people and then fashion. Those three things are kind of what, that's what I look up, look forward to. You know, yeah. Well, let's speak on that a little bit. So, we've known each other since, god damn, uh, freshman, freshman year of high, your freshman year of high school, my sophomore year of high school. Um, 2012? Somewhere around, somewhere around there. A while ago? It was a while ago. I was a freshman. And with that being said, there has been a plethora of life experiences on both sides um, that we've somehow made it to this point and still kicking, still pushing. Mm -hmm. um, something that I feel like you are an expert in, that you don't even know that you're an expert in is positivity, right? There have been to way too many situations where, just speaking for myself, if I was going through the same situation, I would not be as positive as you were in those situations. So. Just speaking on that a little bit, kind of just going through the motions, what would you say is your motivation to keep that positivity? Honestly, I think it comes down to like two things, myself and my upbringing. When I say my upbringing, I'm saying like my parents, not necessarily like my mother, no disrespect to her or anything, but she wasn't really there. She left when I was 12, 
but as far as like my dad and my grandparents and just like the surrounding people and that family aspect, it's really what kept me like trying to stay positive and just keep it going because one thing my dad would always tell, tell me like, yes, life is hard. Yes, you might be going through this or going through that, but if you really get down and think about it, I mean, there's facts out there everywhere. You can see very easily there's, there's somebody out here doing worse than you, no matter how bad your life may be somebody's doing worse than you and even on my worst days my darkest days I have to think about that like oh I can wake up have clothes on my back and I live under a house you know I can eat when I need to eat I got two legs two arms you know some people don't have that which is crazy to think because you think those are just like the basic necessities of life everyone should have these things but it's really not like that not everyone has those things and just link, looking at stuff that way no matter how dark it gets or how bad it may be I'm like well I do have something and something is always mean better than nothing to me and i think that's that's how i stay positive i don't know if it's necessarily like in the in the forefront of it maybe i don't see it myself as it being positive for me but if other people see it then that's i'm doing something right because like i do i do want to be i'm not saying i want to be famous or want to be a big name or anything like that but as far as like when we do go on after our lives or whatever like that i want i don't want my name to be like oh well yeah he was cool we went to school together he died i want i want my name to have some type of weight as opposed to like in a positive manner because you can leave the earth as the the baddest criminal in the world and people will know who you are 100%. but it won't be in a positive manner i want my name to have some type of positive ring positive aspect to it because at the end of the day there's so there's so much so much stuff going on so much bad things going on that i just feel like there has to be something somewhere that you can pull from that is positive like even if it's something as simple as like a kid likes to play the game okay if that makes you happy go do that making music makes you happy go do that just find something somewhere that makes you happy to keep you steady and keep your head above water because not everyone gets rich and everybody gets that life that they want which is it's reality it's it's what it is but as long as you can get something that you wanted out of your life i think that's a positive even if it's just one thing, just sure. getting one thing, I'm, I'd, I'd be grateful for that. Like, I, I'm not at a, the super, I don't have anything I really, really want, and it's like, if I don't get this, I'm just going to die and be mad with my life. Yeah. Very simple, honestly. Very old school, simple. I just want wife, kids, the picket, fi- picket fence, house, stuff like that. I don't need anything crazy. I don't need to be a millionaire. I would like it. I feel like it'd be great. If it'd be it does, fantastic. Yeah. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Am I going to work for it? Yeah. I'm not going to just put, be a stick in the oven and go, hey, it's not going to happen. It's like a 10% chance I make it in life, so I'm just going to leave it right there. But no, I'm going to keep working for it, obviously. But like you said, having your hand in many different hats, because you never know what could, what's going to stick. You never know what's going to go and what could be that, that launch pad. I feel like something that is really important that you touched on is just finding some sense of gratitude and just everyday normal shit yeah. I mean just like you said having two arms having two legs that's not everybody's reality um, and I feel like we as a people spend too much time or put too much importance on money put too much importance on chasing the bag especially our generation I know yeah. plenty of people that are in their 20s they got three jobs they sleep you know like four hours a day or four hours every couple of days and I can't even lie I've been there myself I've been that person that you know I gotta get to the back I gotta figure out how to make as much money as possible in the shortest amount of time uh-huh. um, and I didn't really start to see the repercussions of that to my mental health until like maybe the last couple of years um, cool. Realizing, you know, I let go of certain jobs because they didn't make enough money. But then looking back, that was the happiest times of my life. You yeah. know, I'm just going to work excited every day, and then get that job that I make five dollars more an hour, or you know, ten thousand more dollars a year. I'm just, you know, obviously I got more money in my pocket, but the the joy is gone. Um, and I always, I talk to my little brother about this all the time. I tell him what is something that you will wake up to do every day if money didn't exist and whatever the answer to that question is is what you should be doing anyway um because we lose sight of that we lose sight of that a lot and we dive 
into deep depression because we realize that we wake up or we go weeks without doing anything that we enjoy. I mean, like even just the small mundane things, just like hopping on the game for a couple hours right. or going to a movie or going out to eat. Like we spend so much time trying to figure out how can we retain as much money. But I mean, like that's kind of the way the system works when you come from where we come from, when you come from, you know, I, I don't like to use the word poverty, but just I mean, like, hard times, <laughs> you know, like we got to, we got to figure out a way to get to that point. We ain't got, you know, people with savings accounts, you know what I'm saying? Just in general, not even talking about money in it, but like having one. Yeah. And that's something that I'm glad you talked, you talked about because I mean, like you being 25 and having that that understanding. I mean, plus being in our 20s in general, most people don't get to that understanding right. until they kind of on the decline of life, quote unquote. I just think it's kind of like when I was younger, and you know how you would hear like your adults or your elders saying like, or just people in general saying, if you can find something that you enjoy doing, it's not as much as a job. It's more just. You're, you're, you're making money doing something you enjoy which 100%. is it's not working anymore it's just it's like a participation trophy I don't know mm -hmm. but it's it's more so like say let's just say for example let's say I live to be 80 there's 24 hours in a day so whatever the math is I'm not going to do it that's a that's in, in, in retrospect that's a lot of time that's a lot of hours that I have to live mm -hmm. but if you break it down to every single day, because I just try to live by the day. Like, let me get today, let me conquer today, and I'll worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, obviously, I have my future goals and I have my like my five-year plan, my ten-year plan. I have that, but it all starts with what am I doing today? And if you think about it, there's only 24 hours in a day, and people who work two and three jobs, you work if you work 16 hours in that day, what are you left with? That's over half your day gone. Your day's gone. Yeah, you spend some time to rest. Guys, I mean, there's the commute. Say it takes an hour there and back to get to work. So that's one less hour I have. And I got to get home. I got to eat. I got to get ready for bed because I got to go back to work the next day. So now you're thinking, I have 24 hours in a day. How much time do I have to myself? Maybe like four to six hours. Maybe. Not even including the time it takes to eat, to drive or walk or bus somewhere. The time it takes to get prepared to go to bed for the people who are are insomniacs and can't sleep so it's just like I try especially on my off days when I do get them I just try to be like well what do I want to do today and you don't have to do something every single day I know a lot of people especially in our age group they want to live a very fast lifestyle they want to post on social media that they're doing something they want to they just want to live that life yeah. but what's wrong with me having an off day and I just want to lay in bed to like noon wake up have like a late late breakfast early lunch and just chill go outside and read a book or go outside and just enjoy what what's around us which the crazy part is i'm pretty sure both of us can name a lot of people that would make what you said into a sense of laziness right. or not doing something productive when and this is the problem there's this big push for quote-unquote self-care doing things for yourself but I feel like people miss the part of the care part right. self-care is not going to McDonald's and getting some food you gotta do stuff self-care is stuff that's good for you <laughs> like so like going to get a checkup that's self-care going to get your hair done or get that get a haircut that's self-care but if you are getting Starbucks for the third time today and then you use self-care as an excuse as to why you did it, that's not self-care. That's You're just doing something You're because indulging. you want to. It's indulgence, it's not self-care. Yeah. I feel like we miss, as a people, the part where it is important to do nothing. Because we always feel we gotta, like, feel like we gotta Some do something. 24 seven. And sometimes you don't even have to do something. I, I, I have this issue personally doing something for somebody else mm -hmm. like okay I don't have the energy to do it for me but let me see what the people in my circle might need and see what I can do for them and then you end up realizing that your cup is empty if not empty 
very close to yeah, it. Yeah, close. Um, so I want to ask, what would you say? Obviously, we're not perfect. So, mm-hmm. in times where you feel like you are being consumed by negativity or negative emotions, negative feelings, negative thoughts, what is? What are some tools that you use to get out of that? Or, or if you feel like you're still actively struggling with that, just talk about that experience. Honestly, when it gets down to it, like the real nitty gritty, if I'm really just like, I'm doing it, I've neglected myself, I've gone, I think in like my darkest time, I went like a legit, I think like two months without a haircut, not getting my hair done or anything. Hair's about to mad over it. Like, time to have free form locks at this point. And what, whatever gets me, like, back above the water, honestly, like, everyone find it, whatever it is for you. You have to find that one thing you're very, very passionate about. And if you can't find many things, just, like I said, find that one. I have, I mean, I've come to find a lot of different passions, which is great for me, but I know not everybody's like that. And everybody can go and try and do many different things. Some people are kind of multifaceted, and that's not a bad thing at all. Just some people just don't have the energy or the want to go and find something else. So just do what you already know and whenever I'm like super down like music is my my go-to like it's, it, even if it's just that one song or that one playlist you have to go and listen to to like reset and recharge refuel your body mentally physically emotionally whatever it is I, that's what I go to like I have my playlist that I have to listen to like every morning before work because this is going to keep me here your this is what gets, yeah it gets me focused and it can be like and it's funny too because especially at work um, and whenever we shut down, we can play music. And me, personally, my big thing is R&B. I'm a, I love R&B. I love old school jam stuff like that. And some people might see that as like heart big music, or they might see it as like slow jams is like a, a sad thing. But the lyrics could be sad as hell. I could be listening to like Joe or something, yeah. but I'm not sad. I just really like R&B music, and that's what keeps me focused. So I will listen to R&B all day long, like. Yes, I listen to rap. Yes, I listen to like I listen to all genres of music minus like screamo. But yeah, I just really like music keeps me focused. Music keeps me going because once you, I mean, if if you don't, if you're not an avid music listener to anybody out there, just find an artist, find a song, and listen to it. And whatever you're going through, there's I promise you, with the millions of artists and millions of songs in this world since music's been what here for as long as the world's been here pretty much there's a song somewhere that would relate to how you're feeling no matter what you're feeling i promise you there's something out there somebody's gone through something you're going through has gone through it or still going through it and you can hear it and you can feel it in their song and whenever i feel like oh i'm alone and no one's here for me and oh i've done so much for so somebody else and no one's doing something for me and you might get to that sense of loneliness or you're on your lonesome and no one's there I'm, there's a song somewhere for you. You just got. You, it it's exists. out there. It's out there. It definitely exists. And I feel like. Go ahead. No, I don't cut you off. I'm just saying, like, music is one thing. I feel like with all the languages that everyone speaks and all the different dialects and things that we all communicate, I feel like music is one thing that's pretty universal. There's a song out there for everybody. Somewhere, something. Like there's a song out there. I, I look at for that. And being an artist myself, in in moments where you feel like that song doesn't exist, sometimes you probably are the one that needs to create it. So like I've definitely made, I mean I, I make music for me first. Mm-hmm. So a lot of other songs that I have, I made because I needed to hear it, and then I bounce back to them when I feel like I might have lost my way. I'm like, okay, this is a mindset that I was in at one point, and I did this for a specific reason. So I'm going to come back to this, and I'm going to keep listening to it. And then I'm going to think about what I was doing when I wrote it, or what I was doing when I went to record it, whatever the case may be. Um, Because I know there are plenty of people that struggle with, okay, I'm in this deep depression, or I'm having these negative thoughts. What do I do? And something that I've realized is when you have no idea what to do next, there's three situations or facets of your life that you can cling to. It's your physical, your mental, and your social. So if you don't know what to do, do something to physically 
you know, express yourself, whether it be just going for a walk outside. I'm not saying you got to go to the gym because not everybody want to go to the gym, but exercise is literally just taking a walk around a block or, you know, if you got an animal, take them on a walk or if you are somebody that goes to the gym, get up, go to the gym. And if you don't want to do a full workout, do some cardio on a treadmill, whatever the case may be. Um, the next one is the social. Do something with somebody else. If, if you don't got no friends, hit up your parents. If you ain't got no parents, hit up your siblings. If you ain't got no siblings, go to a coffee shop and talk to somebody. Or go to a bookstore and have a conversation. Because we as humans are communal beings. We have to have community. We have to have some type of conversation or interaction with another human to be able to have our cup to be full and then the next one is the mental read a book listen to a podcast do something with music it's all mental stimulation if you continuously do those three things everything else will fall into place or you'll start to figure out how to get them to fall into place if you just continue to walk in that way obviously that those three sections look different for everybody so the way that I explain them doesn't necessarily have to be that they work for you, but something that I've been using as a tool myself to just kind of elevate my mentality and, and not uh, slip into old bad habits or whatever the case may be. But speaking on habits, what would you say are some habits that you are actively working on relinquishing or that you have? gotten rid of and just purged entirely and how did you do it i think one of my really bad habits and you touched on it earlier i feel like it's just like when you hear people say stuff and it's like if one person says okay maybe it's true but then 10 people all say the same thing like oh maybe this is really true and sometimes i get into it's a habit it's a bad habit i'm working on but i become a little too selfless mm. i'll forget that I, at the end of the day we're all our own people. And yes, you can have your loved ones. Yes, you can have friends and family that you care for, you attend to. But if, at the end of the day, if no one else is around, no one is there, someone has to attend to yourself. And a lot of times I do forget about myself. And that's when I have to get into those things that you touched on. Like, how do I stimulate myself? If no one's around, if there's nobody there, and I'm home alone, and I'm just in my own aspect, how am I going to entertain myself? without reaching out to the ex person, without mm -hmm. reaching out to my friends or my family, like, cause it, they're not always gonna be there. And it's not, a, it's not that it's negative. It's not like, oh, your family, your friends, they don't love you. We're all living our life in this crazy world. So sometimes you just have to sit down and think like, what can I do for me? But I think the funniest thing to me is that when it comes to helping others, when it comes to like buying someone food, or buying someone gifts, it's easy. Like swipe the card, give them, take my money. Not a second thought. But when it comes to me, <laughs> oh, I don't need that, that's expensive, or uh, I can go cook at home, I don't need to make, I don't need to go buy this food, but sometimes you need to sit down and be like, you know what, I work my ass off, I do this, I do that, maybe I do deserve this Chipotle, or maybe I do deserve to go to this concert, go to this game, like, sometimes you need to, to fill your own cup, yes, other people will fill your cup, and yes, you can fill other people's cup, but us as humans, as much as we love helping others, you still have to help yourself too. I, I've been reading this book. It's called How Am I Doing? I recommend it to anybody. It's called How Am I Doing by Dr. Corey Yeager. Um, and I recommend it to anybody if you're just trying to put more importance on yourself. But something that was touched on in the book is I, the idea. I've changed my entire like connection with selfishness. You doing something for yourself is not selfish. I have always thought that if I say no to helping my homeboy move or yeah. say no, I can't come over here or I can't have this conversation right now, I'm being selfish. It's yeah. not the case. I just don't have the capacity to give that to you right now. And I've been I've been beaten up for it, you know, like verbally and just talk bad because oh you ain't doing this for me. I did XYZ for you. Okay, that was fine, and you made that choice. Even if you didn't have the availability to do that and you still did it, you made the active active decision to do whatever it was for me. I don't have the ability to do that right now. And 
selfless. That's not selfish. That is self-care. That is doing what you need to do for you first so that you can get to that 100% and give out better, you know, effective, efficient care to whomever it is that may be asking for you. Um, and I, like, have always... You know, the first question that my therapist asked me, and this is years ago, like first therapist I ever got into, um, she was like, who's the most important person to you in your life? And that was a question I was asked in the book too, and it just brought everything full circle. And for the longest time, the answer to that question wasn't me. The answer to that question was my parents. The answer to that question might have been my significant other at the time. And even of recent, it was my daughter. So it's like, it has to be me because if I don't exist, then my story doesn't. Like everything else, everybody else that I'm worried about, I can't worry about no more if I'm not here. If I just cease poof to exist, everybody else that's so much more important than me lose their importance because who were they important to? Me. So like, I have to be at the top of that pedestal. Um, and I, this is just like a question that's off the off the rip, not something that I like have written down. But do you feel like you struggle with people pleasing? Yeah, I think honestly, I think it takes a really, really, really strong person. My emphasis like really strong to not be a yes man. Like if you have it in you to tell people no, to be like, hey not right now this is I have to worry about me like I kudos to you all the gratitude because it's I don't know as how you're wired how your upbringing is but it's just I think especially coming from like uh my grandma's from Arkansas from the south so my grandpa that you know the down south people it's always about love and care and just attending to people yeah southern hospitality and it's just like you everything's a learned trait like when I say it takes a village how you will act how your surrounding and how your upbringing was and me personally, it, it is so hard to tell people no. I could be, I could be bank account negative, and I have nothing going for me, no gas in the tank. Somebody needs a ride, or someone, hey, you got some money? I'll find a way to get it to you. And it's it's like, I find it so hard to to not be a yes man, and it's something you have to, you really have to work on because if you say yes a hundred times in a row. And now it's time to say no that hundred and first time, and you're not gonna be able to do it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're in a pattern. You you built this repertoire where like, oh well, so and so said I can come to you because you did. You, you, I came to you, and they came to you, and experts came to you, and they all got the help. So how come I can't get the help from you now that I need it? And it's, and it might not even be a negative thing. They not they might be guilt tripping you, like inadvertently. It might not be on purpose, but it, it happens. And now you're in a situation where like, dang. I said no to this one person, does that make me bad? And the answer you have to come to is no, you're not a bad person because you said no. Like, there's only 24 hours in a day, there's only seven days in a week. You you have to find the time for, for yourself and for you to be like, no, actually today is about me, I need to do this for me. And it, it's not a selfish thing because, you know, like you, like you said, if you're not important to yourself, you can't you can't help anyone. As much as you want to, you can't do it because if I'm not looking after me, how am I supposed to look after somebody else? And that's there's two different things that I want to say. You are just as important to you as your village. So you have to do just as much as you do for yourself as you do for other people, if not more. And then with the idea of that, there's two different thought processes that can come from that. So. Some people might think that if they don't help certain people in certain situations, that they would have to relinquish a certain amount of control over a set situations. And I've been in situations where that was the case. Oh, I want to help you because I want to oversee this. Sometimes you have to, nah, you got it. I don't even want nothing to do with it. And I've been there myself. Like, okay, I'm going to help you out because I don't want you to mess this up. I can't. I can't do that with everything. I can't do that with everybody. So I just gotta let you. I gotta let you succeed or or fail. And if you fail, when I'm when I'm ready, I can help pick you up, and we can figure out how to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, because I I definitely struggle from people pleasing too, man. I don't. It's have, tough. Have my bank account go. It's so tough. Negative. 
because you know somebody needed something or what have you and I don't even bat an eyelash at it it's like okay you know they got what they needed though right. so I'm about it's, to figure out how to get this thing out of negative now it's such a stigma that obviously it takes time nothing's done in a day but it's something you, I, I for me personally I do want to break because once you like like I said you get into these patterns it's very very hard to break a pattern it's very very hard to break a habit I think like the scientific terminology between like breaking habits they say it might take like like a, on the short end 30 days mm-hmm. some habits can take months even years to break depending and, on what the habit is for yeah, sure and it's like a mental stimulant that goes off in your brain and in your nerves saying like oh this is what I'm used to so it's like your brain's just a giant computer it, it only does what it knows and if you aren't teaching it anything else it's just going to keep doing what it knows and sometimes you might even and just on a chemical level you might be getting some type of dopamine high and just helping people out yeah. all the time and not realizing that you can get that same feeling from doing that for yourself because in reality like you said these people are not always going to be here they're just not always going to be around the only person that you're around 100 percent of the time is you so in those moments of solitude you have to be able to fill those chemical cups by yourself because if you don't have that external all the time then you feel like you lack it now you going into a depression because you ain't helped nobody in this and it turns into an addiction because, yeah. I mean, by definition, addiction is something that you do instead of doing things that help you survive, like drinking water, eating food, going to sleep. So if you're losing out on sleep because you wanted to go help somebody do something or buying something for somebody else, but you don't get to eat until payday, I mean, you addicted to helping people. That's a real thing. And I didn't yes. know that it was. And so, I mean, like, you, you can kind of surmise that just by looking at the definition of addiction and, and, and where that type of stuff comes from. But, I mean, like you said, not everything happens overnight. It's kind of just a, you got to work at it. And, I mean, like, I, I related to the gym. You don't see gains the first right. day, the first week, or sometimes even the years. first month, like, you know. You don't see no difference. You got to keep working at it, but then you see where the dedication comes from after you've been there for, you know, mm-hmm. you've been there for four months and you see, okay, this is what I looked like four months ago. This is what I look like now. If I would have stopped, I wouldn't have got to now. At all. So it's so a I benefit. Like, I think of it as like, I, obviously I haven't dabbled and delved into the world of like every drug in the world, obviously, but it, in my own opinion, I feel like the most addictive drug whether it's a positive drug or a negative drug however you take it but i feel like love is one of the mm. the most intense drugs in the world mm. it can be super super good and super super bad because love can consume a person like whether you want to mm. think about it or not it, it happens and it can be really good or it can be really bad and it can flip-flop any given day the same way how someone could for example be doing this drug Every day it's a good trip, good trip, good trip. And that one day you OD and you're done. Love can be great until it's not. Yeah. And that's why it's like everything has to come into moderation. You can love, you can love, it's great, go for it. But save some of that love for you too. Or else you're going to have that one day. I mean, God forbid it happens, but this one day it might just, it all goes south. And now you're, you're, you're here. That. And you can die from a heartache. It's possible. It's, it's, a real it's, thing. it's a real thing. There's strings in your heart. They order all that stuff. It'll break and boom. Heart attack. You're dead. Cardiac arrest. That's a real thing. I it's mean, crazy. Love addiction is something that men don't talk about enough. At all. It's, it's a real thing. And when you get down to the basis of everything, when it comes to love, love is one of those things that everybody craves in some way short shape form or fashion with the understanding that it will not last forever i mean like factually because you don't so it's going to end at some point that's something that's just this weird conundrum that i've come to understand but it's also important that you as a person have a clear understanding of what love is to you like Mm -hmm. a strict definition that is not going to change because of who it is that's sitting in front of you or whatever the case may be which is why it's important that it starts with yourself because you can have a clear understanding you you can understand yourself 
a lot sooner than you can understand another person because people change. People change. Well, I feel like I, don't, I won't say people change. People come become more of who they already are. They, their, their true colors start to show. Um, but that was that was a good point. Love is is definitely an addictive, an addictive thing. And when I speak on love, it doesn't have to be like the love for somebody. You can you can love to drink. You can love mm-hmm. to gamble. You can love you can love to do anything and. Whether it's you loving a physical person or a, a physical thing, or maybe it's a mental thing that you love or a spiritual thing that you love, love can, like I said, it can be positive or negative in any aspect, and and I guess it really just starts off like like you said, what what are you loving for yourself? Because like not to say that changing is bad, like everyone's gonna change. It's it's called evolution. It's literally what we do. But how how are you evolving? How are you loving in a way that is going to end up being positive for you in the long run because if I keep loving this bad thing for X amount of time that love, like you said, it's going to run out it's not infinite, so now I have nothing left and now I'm I'm just here now what? Your cup's empty I saw something on YouTube where this dude was talking about he's he was technically well, not technically, he was actually a crack dealer and he was talking about you know, the interviewer asked him, well, why do you do it? Because I, I love it. And I draw that to everything that you said. You can love anything. Love should not be an excuse to do shit that's not bad, that's bad for you. It can't right. be an excuse to be doing anything that's going to harm you or be around anything that's going to harm you. I'm here because I love it. I'm here because I love you. I do this because I love to do it. That's not good enough. There has to be more reasons obviously love is a uh, it can be within those reasons but it shouldn't be the sole reason I mean nothing should really it should just be a collective of certain things why am I doing this for the instance why am I doing the podcast I'm trying to better my community I'm trying to better myself I'm trying to destigmatize talking about these type of things and I love it you know what I'm saying that's just an example um my last question for you is what would you feel like is something that's super important that people listening now or people who are listening in the future need to know in regards to anything that we talked about within the the interview honestly and it's going to sound very simple but obviously I'll explain it so that it will make more sense but sometimes things get too simple and you kind of brush it off like, oh, why well, already knew that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it if it didn't mean something to me because I, at one point, thought I already knew that. And I, I want to say it's, it's just one word. It's the communication. Like, you have to talk. Whether it's good or bad, you need to talk to somebody, whether it's talking to yourself, finding mm-hmm. a therapist, talking to anyone, or just talking. If you have animals, talk to them. They can hear you. Like, we're all animals. They know what we're saying. Mm-hmm. If you just... And this is just a personal thing. This is, I mean, I know someone's felt it too. Like, the longer you just hold stuff in, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine. Eventually, once you blow up a balloon, you keep putting air into it, it's going to pop and it explodes. And the same thing happens with people. Like, if you don't talk about what's going on with you, if there is something going on, or you, maybe you don't even know what's happening. Like, hey, I'm not feeling great right now. I don't know what it is, but I just need to talk to somebody about it. And I feel like, obviously, it's not going to cure everything in the world, but I just feel like the simple conversation asking somebody about their day and then you guys just go off talking about whatever it is it doesn't have to be a podcast you can just literally be talking to somebody about whatever but sometimes just a good nice talk is all you need to to kick start whatever path you need to go on and make a shift right because if you just hold it in and if you don't want to talk to anybody at the end of the day it's like yes you can talk to yourself it's fine it's great you have your own stimuli but getting that outside opinion or just getting that outside listening ear and they can hear and they can give you with their side of it how they feel about it you might find differences you might find similarities that you can build upon because at the end of the day we're all our own unique individuals we all have our own thought processes and we all see things differently and if you that's why like i say it takes the village because this person thinks this that person thinks that i think this we put our thoughts together and this is what we can come out of it this is what comes from it and if you don't talk, if there's no communication, we're not going to get that growth from it. At all. 
can be stagnant and maybe you might like where you're at and maybe you're good you're comfortable but I feel like in a world that's ever growing and in the in the world of evolution where something's changing at all times whether you notice it or not why not grow yourself you know a friend of mine a couple of days ago said something in regards to a situation that I'm going through and a key word that he pointed out was compassion and it just kept on like finding its way into my life in some kind of way shape form or fashion the word compassion like you never know what somebody else is going through you never know what knowledge somebody could hold that would either save your life help elevate you to the next level of your life and there's only one way to get to that knowledge is through communication um, I feel like having conversations that make you uncomfortable help you grow mm -hmm. but growth is uncomfortable in, in, in nature um, so I mean that that's definitely something that I feel like yeah this world is like and the main main thing is like there's two paths you take in this world that we all experience humans animals everything we either experience like, or sometimes both it's sympathy and empathy someone somewhere has done what you're going going through or they've been through it or still going through it or someone can relate to what you're going through and that's the difference between sympathy and empathy sympathy i'm not going to explain this because i don't know the exact definitions but <laughs> one is i didn't experience this but i can see where you're coming from and i can understand it i think that's empathizing and then sympathizing is where oh i've been through this and i know what you i, I know exactly how you're feeling and this is this is what i did with it and like you said like the communication you're gonna you can't figure out what what people know or don't know about you and what you know or don't know about yourself if you're not talking to anyone about it holding all that stuff in will, will make you crumble i've it, definitely it's been there so a bad, couple yeah. of times and then once you get to the point where you're crumbling there's no way you're going to talk because you always get to a point where you feel like you're by yourself yeah. nobody can understand the weight of what it is that i'm like i'm experiencing so I'm not gonna talk to anybody. That I mean, like obviously everybody deals with stuff differently, right, but right. that's been my experience. Especially, you know, I've been in mental health facilities. Being in those spaces and being the only black male individual, or sometimes the only black individual, it's like, dang, half of my experience is because I'm black. So there's no way that I'm about to talk to any of y'all. But I have billions of black individuals in my life that I could talk to that if they haven't been in the same situation, they've been through something similar. So just like you said, communication is extremely important, but also knowing who it is that you're communicating with. You can't, obviously you can't communicate with everybody, but yeah. everybody communicates with somebody or something. Like you said, talk to your dog, talk to your cat, yeah. talk to your lizard, whoever, whatever thing you got near you, talk to, somebody. Talk to it. Cause awesome. it'll change, it'll change your day, it'll shift your mindset even though even if a little bit but a little bit is better than nothing also my last nugget like there's hoodies or there's t-shirts everything about it but i really stress it and every time i talk to anyone who say they're going through something i always let them know like and i let myself know too it's okay to not be okay but the stuff that happens in this world and the stuff that happens within our own smaller worlds like i promise you it's okay to not be okay it's okay that you're not having the greatest day. It's okay that you're not perfect because nobody is. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect. And there's no perfection. Like, it's okay to be like, you know what? Actually, I'm having a pretty bad day. And today's been actually been shitty. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Like, just be your, your honest and be like your open self and be truthful to what you are. If you're not having a good day, just say it. Like, you don't have to say it. I'm doing and, great. And on that note, it's also, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to let you go. But. It's also important to know that it's not okay to not be okay all of the time. If you are not okay all of the time, consistently, That's like every story. day, there's something that you need to do, somewhere you need to go, someone you need to talk to, to get you to a point where there are moments where you literally are okay. Right. Because I've definitely had weeks I'm not okay you know for this entire month that's not normal that's not okay um and that's that's all i'm gonna say i'm, I'm gonna let that go at that point because that's a whole different conversation right that's an that's episode 250 exactly. there, there's forever. a lot of ways that can go but 
that's just something to, to kind of think about if you're a person that is consistently not okay you might want to seek some resources you might want to try to figure out what it is that you can do to get to a baseline or if you even just figure out what your baseline is um but yeah but anyway man i i appreciate you being on the podcast i definitely am looking forward to some music because I, yeah. I i need to to see what you got coming out next the last time you put out music it was before the pandemic it was yeah before, it was before covid or right that's... during covid honestly so i mean yeah there's definitely it's been a long hiatus there's definitely some space and i need I need you to put that out. But as for your music that is out, I'll put it in the description of the podcast episode so people can listen to that. Um, but yeah, appreciate yeah, no, you. This was great. I appreciate the time you took out for this. And it was good. Like I said, communicating is healthy. Come on, it's stuff, good. Bro. It's good stuff. All right, bro. Perfect.